Would you like to see what happened when Alonso Rodriguez and his team rigged a 600 meter line, the longest line in California, almost 2,000 feet, after a windstorm? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. We just had California's longest lineup for about two days before it got destroyed. And here's all of the equipment we used to rig this line. Not shown as a couple of things, but most of the important stuff is here. We had the line rigged on 200 meters of half marathon, no enough splits, and then 200 meters of marathon with an enoff split every 50 meter section, and then 200 meters of blue with an enoff split every 50 meter section. Now our failure happened on our static end, which was on the half marathon. As you can see here, tore clean through. This is one end. This is the other end. This broke about six to eight inches in front of the weblock, and we want to say that the wind caused this, but not directly. We think, after looking at our leashes, which are also destroyed now, see these abrasion marks? We think that the two leashes that were hanging out on that side were rubbing on the webbing as the wind was blowing, and they eventually cut the main line, which failed 200 meters of the line, and then with the oscillation of that, of the backup going, everything else just kind of failed. <clears throat> so our static anchor was rigged on spannies. We just wrapped a big boulder and had a soft release with a web lock on it and a soft shackle for the backup. The soft, the soft shackle did catch on the backup when the main line failed. It was a soft shackle to a frost knot on the half marathon. It caught, there's no damage on the frost knot. It's super good enough. Soft shackles we had for the Enoff splits. Most of them look pretty good. Some look a little bit rough. Look what I got. Alonzo sent me these, the ones that looked the most damaged. And we are going to interrupt this program with some awesome brake tests. Let's go to the Slack Snap machine and find out how compromised these really are. Welcome to Slack Snap. Here is our first sample. If you don't know what Slack Snap is, Watch our other episodes. Uh, broken the news. Like always, the part that goes around the head. That's, that smells kind of funny. 10,950 pounds of force. That's a lot. So our next test is the soft shackle shaped like the Enov split where it goes inside of itself here. And then I put the button knot here because that's where we set it inside of the loop instead of it pulling favorably where the button knot would be up here. This is already at two kilonewtons. <laughs> 7,800 pounds of force for that one. Wow, that's a big difference. Huh, where did it break? Put in the comments below where you think that broke. Cause that's where the, uh, because that's where the news hole was. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Let's do that again. Oh, we're getting quite the range. 9,100 pounds of force. Um, they're all super strong enough. This one does look like it broke in the noose. Pretty sure that's what we've got here. Let's test uh, soft shackle pulling on another soft shackle like it does when the uh, backup is engaged. So I've set up an Enov split where this side would be a sewing loop. So it has that figure eight shape on this soft shackle. And then in between the two holes, between this side and this side, I inserted this soft shackle. And so it'd be pulled up against that guy. And when I turn it on, that is sitting as unfavorably as you could imagine. And that's what's going to happen when the backup webbing is holding the main webbing. Wow, it's 
really, oh my gosh, it's really in there. That's really, really tight. Uh, looks like, looks like the noose broke somewhere, probably in here. Well, it was inside of here. 6,500 pounds of force. That is basically still as strong as the webbing you put it in. We'll do more brake tests with soft shackles later, but this is a kind of an interesting thought on the status of the soft shackles that were in his system after being damaged. We had a BFK on that side completely fail on us because when the static side broke and the half marathon went, we're assuming that the padding we had on this side must have fallen off the cliff. It wasn't, it wasn't tied very well. And the BFK had the opportunity to rub the edge of the cliff back and forth with the wind. And every single strand of the BFK broke. As you can see these guys here, strands of rope everywhere. So that broke. And the only thing that kept the webbing off the ground was kind of funny was the leash and that was this guy here. This guy was on a vortex ring and it was tied off to the shelf of the BFK and that actually kept the weblock from just going out into space and slamming against everything. I have the vortex somewhere around here. Right over. No. There's one half of it. Yeah, they have to be around here somewhere. Oh, there it there is. It is. So, vortex completely broke. You can see that. It's no longer fitting. So I got a defective vortex is what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So we had uh, three leashes on this line. Showed very heavy abrasion afterward on the dynamic side. And this guy was actually rubbing right up against the rock here. So that's what, that's what this abrasion is all from. We're on the static side. And we think now that these were rubbing on the webbing and they actually cut the webbing at some point during the night. Um, these leashes actually came off the anchor and they were out in the middle of the webbing when the line failed. So good lesson to take away from that maybe. Don't use leashes like this on big lines that are gonna be left up in heavy wind. I think it would be advisable to use vortex rings and take them off at the end of the night just to make sure we don't have any abrasion like this in the future. I wanna talk about something else. Segmented lines. Cut your webbing, people. Our, the segment of line that failed for us was a continuous 400 meter piece folded in half and it broke right in front of the weblock. So a 200 meter main line failure caused this line to drop about a little over 50, maybe a little under 100 meters. So think about that next time you're on a 200 meter continuous piece of webbing, that if that piece fails, you're going for about a 100 meter ride. It's no fun at all. Cut your webbing, do the segmented thing. Every single one of our Enoch splits held. Most of the soft shackles still look like they're in really good shape. I would reuse most of these. Definitely, definitely segment your webbings and use Enoch splits could save your life. Another interesting thing, this was the web block we used on the static side. When we went up to the anchor, this web block was no longer fully intact. The pin holding the webbing was actually right here. We don't know why that happened. Uh, there's no way you can hit it against something and get it out like that. We really, Still kind of a mystery, but this thing was right here. Almost all the way out. Webbing almost completely came out of this weblock. We had half marathon in here. Spacers are in there. You could see it was used properly with a soft release. Uh, this is the soft release we had on there. Uh, this is still in pretty good shape. There's no abrasion on it or anything like that. And these were the other two leash rings we used. We had a bomber ring and two regular aluminum rings from, I believe these are from Balance Community, but I'm not 100% sure. The rig, we had 200 meters of half marathon, continuous piece with a 
210 meter piece, maybe 215 meter piece of half marathon backup. So the loops were a pretty good size. Uh, after that, we had 50 meter pieces of marathon with about six meters, with six meters of backup extenders on each one. Um, after that, we had 50 meter sections of blue, also with six meter extenders. I use six millimeter Dyneema am steel for my extenders. This is the actual stuff we had on there. This is all in still in really good shape. Nothing looks damaged. I run these through tubular webbing just to give them a little bit of weight and abrasion resistance, I guess, but mostly for the weight. We did see a little bit of abrasion in one of the sewn loops, but I think it's good enough. So this sewn loop here was used as a backup, or this, this Type 18 was used as a backup, and we saw this damage after removing it. Let me know what you think about that. So these are still 200 meter pieces of half marathon each. I think these should be cut shorter, personally. But here's the cut, front and back. This is where the webbing failed, and this was right in front of the weblock. Not behind the weblock, maybe eight inches in front of the weblock, which is why it's kind of leading me to believe that the leashes are what did the work here. But yeah, I think this piece of webbing is still really good for the most part. Obviously, you need, we need to send this in and get some sewn loops on it, maybe cut it into smaller segments. It's got small pieces of abrasion, but Nothing I really think is super serious. Mostly just little scuffs and damages. It's almost a brand new piece of half marathon. Same thing with this guy here. Really nice heavy piece. Some tape marks, but nothing serious. These spannies took a little bit of abrasion. Uh, I think when the main line failed, the padding we had on this shifted a little bit and it was no longer where we needed it to be, so it was able to it was able to take really, really high cyclic loading in a really non-optimal place. But yeah, we've got little bits of abrasion on it. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I think this is the most. We used a BFK, this eight mil rope, the sterling rope you can buy on Balance Community, and we actually noticed that one of the three bolts we used bent. And I'm not talking about a slight bend. This thing bent like 60 to 80 degrees. And the reason why I think that happened was because if the BFK is here, the wind shifted it slightly off center like this, you know, you got about 50 meters of side sag with the strong wind. I think most of the weight shifted to the far right bolt, which is the one that bent and caused it to bend. It's, it, was a, it was a wave bolt, and I believe those bend somewhere between six to eight kilonewtons. I know they don't break into, into about 20 to 30, but it's still deformed pretty heavily. I don't know if I would wanna reuse that bolt. You know what's great about editing videos? You can slip your thoughts right in the middle of the film. So, wave bolts, let's talk about those. These are neat because they break at 40 kilonewtons. But as you can see, they bend a lot lower. This is a really thin piece of metal, and it actually starts to bend at four kilonewtons. And that wind definitely put on that much, if not 10 kilonewtons, I estimate. Uh, all the breaking happened, apparently, from things rubbing. But don't use these for highlining. And if you do, use epoxy. Um, they're only 30 kilonewtons when you use AC100 and you're pulling more straight out. But any of these continuous rods where the rod goes up, around, and back down, you're going to get lower bending strengths. And then you start to have failure, and of course, they're now gonna to have to chop that bolt and add a whole different one. Um, I do like the titanium ones. These actually start to bend around 12. And the eight millimeter rods, these are pretty strong, uh, but they require a 16 millimeter hole. And you only get eight millimeters of metal. I like the fixed bolts because you're getting 10 millimeters of metal or 12, depending on what you get. And then the monster crux bolts. This is a 12 millimeter rod. 
I'm not fond of their welds, but it doesn't bend at four kilonewtons. And it's got a nice bend radius for your ropes. These wave bolts destroyed my soft shackles when I used them to connect. So you know how much I love soft shackles. And I had to start using 72 kilonewton carabiners, which is not the end of the world. I can handle not using a soft shackle for a minute. Anyways, there's some fun facts about bolts for you. Eh, don't use wave bolts for highline anchors. Uh, all the other ones seem to be just fine. Just use stainless steel at least. Unless you're near the ocean, then use titanium. But you can learn all that in the Bolting Bible at hownottohighline.com.